Hey, in the GBA Pokemon games, we face off against at least 10 whole Pokemon trainers, and each of them have a certain class. And no, I don't mean like the rich boys versus the poor backpackers. Er, well, no, I, I do, but like, I mean class as in like other RPGs. You got the rogues, the knights, the wizards. In Pokemon, you have the hoopster, the hiker, and the fire breathers. How interesting. And in this video, I am going to explain all of the trainer classes that were introduced in the GBA Pokemon games. What Pokemon do they tend to use? What are some of their special rules? And so you know, I'm excluding the evil organizations, and also, there are always exceptions to rules. When I say, Battle Girls use Fighting-type Pokemon, that line is still true, even though three, count them, three of the 70-plus Battle Girls use Ice-type Pokémon instead. That doesn't mean Battle Girls use Fighting-type Pokémon is wrong. Anyway, let's get started and start with the Battle Girls, since I mentioned them. Girls who are training for battle. Be them beginners, just starting out at Karate, like in X and Y, Kung Fu users in Black and White, or just kicking really high in the air in Hoenn. It comes as no surprise that they use Pokémon they can train with. Fighting-types. Bug maniacs remind me of the creepy teacher from Azumanga Dayo. Remember that? They are basically the bug catcher class from before, but they never grew out of their bug catching phase. Some even directly state that that's the case. And looking at tiny bugs all the time would potentially lead to needing glasses. At least in the real world, bug Pokemon are kinda... big? But yeah, they use bug-type Pokemon exclusively. The glasses make them look bug-eyed. I think that's the joke. Collectors are sort of like bug maniacs, except they are after... Well, whatever it is, they happen to be collecting. In Ruby and Sapphire, they have both version-exclusive Pokémon, such as Ludicolo and Shiftry, or Seviper and Zangoose, collecting exclusive sets in a way. In Diamond and Pearl, they have three of the same Pokémon. They are collecting that Pokémon, and in Platinum, they mainly have rare Pokémon. Feebas, Munchlax, Togekiss, Porygon, etc., because scarcity equals value, and that's what collectors like collecting the most. Now take a guess what Pokémon painters use exclusively. Yeah, it's Smeargle. Now, I'd like to take a minute to tell you about a very pleasant experience I had recently, and by that, I mean two! Yes, two! Tokyo Treat Do! A monthly box where you will get up to 20 of the latest, greatest, limited edition, and seasonally flavored snacks only available in Japan for a limited time! Seiza Choco! Limited flavors of Pepsi, Kit Kat, Cheese Puffs! Nani? Chester Cheetah! More like Chester's beef, you know! It's one big Cheeto Puff. But Chester has nothing on this. It's legitimately so much better, it's like buttery! Oh, I love having tea with friends and then challenging them with words in other languages. Read all these for me. Oh boy. And with Sakura Co, your monthly boxes will include up to 20 traditional and authentic artisan Japanese snack items, some of which have had their recipes passed down for over a century. And they each pair well with the included tea of the month as well. And the specially crafted Japanese tableware included in each box adds an extra dose of pleasantry to it all. Mm. Apple Pong. This month's theme for both of these boxes is Sakura, and they have a special offer for you. Five dollars off? Heck yeah, fam! Just gotta use the coupon code LOXTON at either of the links below. It's like Pokemon! You know Pokemon! You choose your version! Or you just catch them all! ALL the snacks! Oh man, I'm parched. Conveniently, Tokyo Tree provides drinks, too. Ah! And if you order by March 31st, you'll receive the same box I got here. And again, the coupon code is LOXTON. And I wish you a wonderful day. Melon Pondoro? It's a pun! Ruin maniacs are crazy about archaeology, exploring ruins and ancient caves to uncover the secrets of our ancestors. They are typically old men wearing stereotypical explorer garb. But in Gen 4, well that's just Indiana Jones. And they use a combination of rock, ground, and steel type Pokémon to help them in their work. Dragon Tamers are dorks who like to play dress-up. They are dragony Super Sentai hero dudes. Interestingly, this class is mentioned in the Gen 2 games, but you never actually see any until the Gen 3 games. And you guessed it, they use Dragon-type Pokémon, as well as Pokémon in the Dragon Egg group. Because remember, you don't have to be Dragon-type to be a dragon. The Interviewers. Technically a class, I suppose, though you only meet one pair in any game. They just show up again and again for more interview battles. You've got Gabby and Ty, Rocky and Oli, and Gillian and Cam. 
All amazing names for them. Good job naming team. They mainly use Pokemon that are related to their work, like Magnemite and Loudred, or Helioptile and Noivern, because sound and electrical equipment. Then we have Senpai and Kohai, or in the West, Senior and Junior. But only in Gen 3, later the duo was renamed to Teammates. But who they are is still the same. Two high school friends that are in different grades, and as such, their Pokémon are usually of differing levels, and are often normal type. Though later, they often have some variety. Experts are old and wise, well trained in their martial arts, and thus mainly use fighting type Pokémon. But their expertise does not end there. Many will pair their fighting type Pokémon with a non-fighting type. And when two experts happen to be together, they are known as the old couple class. My, what a downgrade of a name. Well, maybe they used to be cool like the cool couple. A couple of ace trainers paired up. They use complementary Pokémon of the opposite sex, which means sometimes it's like Nido King and Nido Queen, you know? But then other times it's Blissey and Arcanine. Or Piloswine and Crobat. They cover each other's weaknesses. They are good pairs for double battles. Smart choices. The young couple are a couple of lovebirds, a boyfriend and a girlfriend, matching outfits after their initial appearance, and of course, they use proper Pokémon pairs, usually of the opposite sex, like Volpeat and Illumise, Nidoking and Nidoqueen, Dustox and Beautyfly, Miltank and Tauros, and famously, the joke pairing, Cloyster and Onyx. Take a good long look and think about it. Onyx knows Harden, and Rock Polish. Dig. Well, another totally unrelated class that features a duo are the Crush Kin, or literally fighting siblings in Japanese. Except it's literal fighting, not the figurative door slamming arguments over who gets the slightly bigger half of a Rice Krispie treat fighting. Uh, well, they use pairs of fighting types like Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee, or Machap and Primate, or Alakazam and Houndoom. Okay, that's a weird one. Another sibling pair are the Sis and Bro duo, a combination of a swimmer and a tuber. They're having a beach day! And of course, this means they have their water types with them. For safety. And speaking of tubers, they are just that. Little kids with inner tubes to help them keep afloat on the ocean. It's a fun beach day. On their own, they use a combination of water and normal type Pokémon. Especially Meryl, as Meryl itself is a flotation device. Triathletes are also found in the water. They are fitness freaks, always out jogging or swimming or biking, hence the triathlete thing. They're working up to doing a whole triathlon. The Pokémon they have with them has to do with what exercise they are currently doing. For example, take a guess what type of Pokémon the swimming triathletes use. Yeah, water. The ones out running? They use Pokémon who are fast runners, such as Doduo and Dodrio, almost exclusively. Dylan here adds in an Arcanine. And the ones on bikes? Electric types. Are they helping power the bike? Or are they just hanging out because the spinning of the bike gears generates some, like, static electricity? Are they there to slightly shock their trainers if he starts slowing down? Well, at least triathletes are a step above the athletes. A Pokémon Colosseum exclusive class. Oh yeah, when I said GBA games, I meant Gen 3. Yeah, we're talking about Pokémon Colosseum here, but unfortunately... Most of the Colosseum trainer classes get no respect. Pokémon teams just using whatever, seemingly random teams for the most part. You know, let's just quickly mention all of the Colosseum and XD classes. We've got... Bandana Guy, Bodybuilder, Casual Dude, Casual Guy, Chaser, Cypher Admins, and Peons, Mirror B Peons, Curmudgeon. The heck does Curmudgeon mean? Oh, it's a bitter old man as opposed to the fun old man and matron classes. Glasses man, guy, hunter, lady in suit. Uh, well, then there's the myth trainer who uses the whole gosh darn weather trio and Pikachu. So ha. Mount battle master, navigator. They're water flying specialists, so I guess some of these classes are kind of themed. Newscaster, rider, Robo Groudon. I loved Gale of Darkness. Yeah, this is a trainer. It throws out Pokeballs and you battle the Pokemon instead of it. Roller Boy! Shady Guy! Street Performer! Spy! Super! Trainer! And lastly, Team Smegma. It's sn snag snagum snag Team Snagum is what I meant to say. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's the cast of the new trainer classes from the GameCube games. Most of these were never used again. So, uh, let's get back to the main games. Hex Maniacs are witches with magical crystal balls. Perhaps to see into the future with. 
hence them dressing like a Miss Magius, who wouldn't be a Pokémon until the next generation, interestingly. Also, their original sprites in the Japanese version of the game makes them appear to be possessed or something. Eyes rolled back into their head. Maybe the balls are giving them good vibes. They use a combination of psychic and ghost-type Pokémon to better see, feel, and communicate with the other side. And kindlers are just known as campfires in the Japanese versions. I guess that is what they make. They carry wood and have fireproof aprons. Bonfires are important to many Japanese traditions and festivals you see. And this is some common worker wear for those that make them. They use a combination of fire and water type Pokémon. Also, one of them has a Moltres. Rich boys, high class children. They dress in suits and have nice, slick hair. And they have no concept of money, I suppose, as they pay out a large amount of money when defeated. The highest on record, in fact. 14,104 Poké Dollars. They also always use a full restore, even though their Pokémon would be fully healed even by a super potion. And even then, they only have one Pokémon that is generally weak and intended for children. Zigzagoon, Wooper, Tranquil, Luxio, and the like. And ladies are the fine young ladies of luxury. And they too pay up the big bucks and use full restores. And even their Pokémon carry nuggets or stardust on them for no reason other than the fact that it's funny, I guess. Lady Selfie will even give you expensive items just for showing her registered Pokémon on your Pokédex. And they use the same sort of weaker Pokémon, just like the rich boys, but with a feminine twist. Puppet, Persian, Baneri, Seeking, and such. The Aroma Lady class, flowery young women with magical sparkles swirling around them because they smell really, really nice. They douse up on that perfume hard to hide the smell of death on their hands. They use grass-type Pokémon and Pokémon known for smelling. I can't say smelling good here because of Gloom and Vileplume, but Roselia, Breloom, Combi, Cherim, even Tropius are common amongst them. And then Aroma Lady Time uses a Gudra. Can't imagine those smelling any good. Parasol Lady are young ladies who use a parasol and raincoat to keep dry as they use Pokémon who alter the weather with moves like Rain Dance. And then also Pokémon who benefit from rain, like Cast Form, Ludicolo, Frillish, and Pokémon who know Thunder, which when raining is perfectly accurate. Crush Girls are almost identical to Battle Girls, but they appear a bit older and are only found in Pokémon Fire Red and Leaf Green, and uh, yeah, they use fighting types. Ninja boys are little make-believe ninjas. They always camouflage themselves in the landscape to ambush you, and they use poison types, especially Ninjask, for the ninja connection, and coughing for the smoke ball disappearing act ninjas do. Pokemon breeders breed Pokemon for a living, like horse, cattle, or dog breeding, only Pokemon. While they use a wide variety of Pokémon, they tend to be underleveled for where you happen to be fighting them. Freshly hatched, I suppose. And their Pokémon often have specific natures, or even egg moves. Pokémon Rangers? Range Pokémon. What does that mean? Uh, they are like park rangers. They keep everyone in the park or out in nature safe, making sure people don't get lost along the routes. And they make sure that injured wild Pokémon get properly taken care of. And so, they often have a healing item at their disposal. It's a pretty cool job, which is why there's a whole spin-off series of games based off of them. Pokémon Ranger. In Generation 5, Pokémon Rangers give out berries when defeated because berries are out in nature, and nature education is a big part of being a park ranger too. At first, all of their Pokémon were grass-type, because nature, I guess. But after the spin-off games came out, all future depictions of the rangers in the main games would give them diverse teams, seemingly with no theme at all. Which actually works, because they help wild Pokémon of all kinds, and if you play Pokémon Ranger, you're kinda... catching all kinds of Pokémon just willy-nilly. Now Frontier Brains! Is that really a class, though? It's really a class of classes. Best described as the gym leaders, or just the regular leaders, of the different parts of the Battle Frontiers. They hand out symbols to those who defeat them instead of badges. Uh, tell you what, I'll explain them individually in a Battle Frontiers Explained video, because their functions and teams vary wildly. I mean, some of them don't even have a set team because the whole point of the Battle Factory is random rental Pokémon. So lastly, the Winstraits. This one family get a whole trainer class to themselves. They are Victor, Victoria, Vivi, Vito, and Vicky. They are a family of five, so they all get a V in their name because V is five in Roman numerals. But Vito isn't home. In fact, he's off to challenge the Pokémon League, so you fight him on the way out there. And they don't have a specific set of sprites. Rather, they just use the sprites belonging to other classes, and their whole deal is in their name. Winstraits. 
wind streaks. You have to defeat all of them back to back without breaks in between in order to pass their challenge. And their Pokemon teams follow the same rules that the classes they pull their sprites from follow. For the most part, anyway. And whoa, hey! That was all the new trainer classes introduced in Gen 3! Next time, we'll go over Gen 4 and 5 together, the DS era of Pokemon. So I hope you're subscribed to see it. And until then, never stop using your noggin. That was a very... not an outro. <laughs>